decay. By placing a filling, we reduce the amount of bacteria in a patient's mouth, extend the life of the tooth, and delay the need for additional dental work indefinitely. Our patient today has been experiencing some slight discomfort in their lower left first molar, or, as dental professionals might say, tooth 19. Before we begin, we need to get some x-rays taken of our patient's teeth. X-rays, or radiographs, are essential, low-cost diagnostic tools used to examine a tooth's roots, check the health of the bone surrounding the tooth, observe the status of developing teeth, and find abnormalities such as cavities. Let's get started. First, insert a positioner into the patient's mouth. Next, position the x-ray cylinder where indicated. Great. With the x-ray cylinder in place, we need to get behind our radiation barrier to reduce the amount of radiation we're being exposed to, and take the picture. Don't worry, the lead apron will protect our patient from any unnecessary radiation exposure. I couldn't have done it better myself. I'll have my assistant handle the other x-rays, so let's move on. With all of the x-rays completed, it's time to look for potential issues. When examining dental x-rays for cavities, look for hints of changes in the density of a tooth enamel, or dentin. These locations will appear as darkened areas on an x-ray. This is because the decayed portion of the tooth is less intact, and the x-rays can penetrate that portion of the tooth. Do you think our patient has a cavity? I agree. Can you identify it on the x-ray? There it is. We need to get that taken care of as soon as possible. Let's get started. Now that you've identified the cavity, we need to apply a topical numbing gel to the anesthetic injection site to help reduce any discomfort the needle may cause. Next, we can administer the local anesthetic. The patient will, at most, feel a slight pinch. Afterward, the area will become numb for hours, even though the procedure will only last a few minutes. Take the syringe and inject the local anesthetic into the patient's gums, just below the tooth we'll be working on. And now we'll give our patient a few minutes to become completely numb. Now that our patient's mouth is numb, we can move on to removing the decay. To begin, we'll need to isolate the tooth using a cotton roll. This will give us some space to work. Looks good to me. Dentists typically remove tooth decay with a burr inserted into a handpiece. This is what most people refer to as the drill. Prepare the area by using the burr to carefully remove all of the decay from our patient's tooth. Now that the decay has been removed, we need to figure out which type of filling our patient wants, amalgam or composite. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Amalgam fillings are more durable than composite, but they don't have a tooth-colored appearance like composite fillings. They also often require a larger portion of the tooth to be prepared in order to retain the filling. Composite fillings are much more aesthetically pleasing and require less drilling than amalgam, but they can be a bit more expensive. Sounds good to me. Start by using this amalgam carrier to place the amalgam into the prepared area of the tooth. Next, pack the amalgam into the prepared area using the condenser. Smooth the filling using an instrument called a burnisher. Use the curing light to harden the amalgam. At this
this point, we'll check the patient's bite to ensure that everything is normal and the patient doesn't experience any discomfort. Fortunately for our patient, you did an incredible job and there doesn't seem to be any problems with the filling or our patient's bite. Since everything looks good, go ahead and polish the filling using a polishing instrument. All done. Everything looks flawless. After the procedure, our patient